Hello, it's about 11.30 p.m. or so, give or take, and uh, it's honestly about time for me to get my ass into bed and uh, get ready for work in the morning. Um, but I figured I probably won't be uploading anything else this week for reasons that I will make apparent, and then, um, yeah, I figured I might as well record something, and this is probably the best chance I'll get. Um, so, like... As of right now, it's kind of like a weird Wisconsin snowpocalypse type deal happening. Um, I had to take a day off of work yesterday, um, yesterday being Monday the 28th. Um, yeah, like the roads were just terrible, and I was like, well, fuck, can't do that. And uh, because I uh, didn't take my work computer that has all my stuff on at home for the weekend... Uh, I was kind of just forced to take a day off, which I really didn't want to do because I would rather use that for when I want to actually take off, um, which I, you know, was kind of planning for later in the year. But oh well, um, I'll make that up somehow. And um, yeah, so now the snow has stopped and the roads are like cleared up, at least mostly. And that like that's the other thing, too, is like it isn't like really well packed together snow. It's like the really like dusty kind that like as soon as the wind picks up, it, like, blows everywhere. It was a major pain in the ass getting back to my car this, uh, this afternoon, just because it was, uh, yeah, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I'm pretty sure I still have, like, snow deep inside my ears, that's a lie, but it sure did feel like it for at least, like, 30 minutes after I got into my car. Um, and yeah, now it's supposed to be, like, ridiculously cold the next two days, and this time I do have my computer home, so hopefully I can, you know, if push comes to shove, work from home if I really need to. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's been um, delay after delay in terms of being able to, like, you know, just get into my uh, office and work and do things. Um, and that's not good because we work on monthly deadlines, which means that I really have to cram to get shit done um, by Thursday evening. Um, so that kind of sucks. And then also, too, um, just in general, February is going to be a busy month for me work-wise, too, and I kind of need to get a head start on things next week. So, long story short, I wanted to get more shit done for y'all towards this weekend, and I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so probably going to be pretty slow on the whole YouTube thing until, like, the second week of February, so just, you know... Be patient with that. I always, uh, I always prioritize life stuff before, uh, <laughs> before uh, making this stuff for y'all. So, hope y'all can understand that. But yeah. I, anyways, other than that, this, this is not the point of making this video. I just thought I should lead with that because this will probably be the last thing on my channel for a good two weeks now. Um, you know, if that's the worst case scenario, you might see, you know, a thing here or there from me. Um, but yeah, I wanted to talk about. Uh, appropriately enough, kind of like balance, and I, I, like, I don't even know if balance is a good word, I don't really even, I have like a vague idea of what I want to talk about, and I, I guess if I had to, if I had to describe it, it would be not putting all my eggs in one basket, like putting individual eggs in many baskets, um, I don't know, basically, I've been thinking a lot about how more and more the past few few months maybe even year maybe even actually like for many years now and I just kind of never realized it about myself um I've kind of been a little bit more um I guess comfortable with the idea of not being a specialist in any given area and being more like a jack of all trades master of none sort of deal um, if that makes sense, uh, and this, I, I feel like this goes, you know, even into stuff like, you know, obviously like nerd things and all that, but even like professionally speaking or just like hobbies and interest wise and all that stuff, um, just like every facet of my life, the more I look at it, the more I'm realizing that like, there's not any like one given thing I really like to associate with and define by which I think is a very beneficial thing in a lot of regards because it means I don't get ever so intertwined within something that it becomes, like, a core pillar of who I am as a person. And it, like, you know, like, if something goes wrong there, it, like, 
also like shatters part of who I am sort of deal. Um, but I also don't like, you know, obviously the detriment there is I, I feel like I also just like straight up lack expertise in like a given area, which is not how I feel like modern society is built. Like, um, just at least with our current economic, like in professional, like landscape that we currently live in, at least in America. And I'm sure a lot of other places, this is similar, um, like, you know, you go to school for something, uh, you get a degree, and ideally you get a decent job. Uh, you know, that's <laughs> easier said than done nowadays. I I'm, I consider myself lucky, to be frank. Um, not that I didn't, you know, work hard and stuff, but obviously I'm, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of luck that comes into play and a lot of, like, you know, the way that society rewards people of my background, that sort of thing, but, you know, I, I feel like I've talked about that in other videos like this, so no use dwelling on it now, um, but yeah, like, you know, it's, it's tricky, but that is kind of the end goal of this whole, like, our whole, like, education and, like, job training system is, like, you, you become really good at a specific thing, and then, you get better at it or at least like kind of increase your responsibilities maybe learn a, a few more things along the way um you go down a skill tree to put it into really cringy video game terms i suppose and um you know you develop a career out of that now when i tried doing that i i originally went to university for computer programming and just eventually and i've talked about this god knows how many times in these videos too so i'm not going to dwell on it too much either i just figured it wasn't for me and i wanted to like more of like a social like social media kind of internet marketing online relationship management pr journalism weird clusterfuck major and minor mix um it's really hard to describe but mostly it's it's social media management is basically when i what i went to um university for um, and it was, the program was developed by a person and actually it was a, a pretty well-respected program for one that was so young because it, it just, a lot of professionals in, in the area, um, had, you know, so many overwhelmingly positive things to say about us. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really created by this guy because he realized that how a lot of businesses work, um, small businesses do can't afford to hire a bunch of individual specialists because like that's just asking for too much of a team so what a lot of small businesses uh really rely on um are people who can do like a bunch of different things at once to an acceptable degree and kind of the same thing with medium-sized businesses where even you know they can start to kind of hire more people and um build up a team of people who are specialists and whatnot but they still need people who can multitask just because, you know, that's a easier thing on their budget and all that sort of thing. And then in big businesses, you often run into a problem where you have so many different departments and I don't, I, it's late and I can't think of how the expression goes, but like, you know, the, the left leg doesn't know what the right arm is doing and that sort of thing. Uh, and he just saw like a lack of people with good communication skills that can, or not even just a lack of communication skills, but a lack of you know, concrete understanding of those different areas and how they each work and how they should be working in harmony. And he, and he really sought to create a program that kind of filled in that gap. Um, so like, on, <laughs> oh God, time to use another embarrassing video game reference, but like he kind of created like a red mage type major uh, where like there was like a, a clear emphasis in like digital media stuff. But he taught us enough about like graphic design, um, PR, journalism um you know like tv like audio visual stuff like like this whole fucking mix of of different like media and um marketing skills that would serve us well and uh kind of help us you know work within like be able to wear many hats is i guess the the term i'm looking or the phrase i'm looking for um and, like, it, it was just something that really fit with me on a personal level, and I'm, like, really happy I was able to, like, waltz into that program considering how unique it is, and it was just a really good match for what I was interested in and what I feel like I'm good at doing. Um, because, like, the more I think about it, like, I'm I'm really, like, even, like, hobby-wise, I guess the last thing that I really say that I, like, quote-unquote specialized in was, like, getting really deep into mega 10 stuff and even that i i felt like i kind of burned myself on and 
coming back to it now with doing that Kyuyaku let's play, um, which is still don't worry. I'm I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let this become a let's play Shin Megami Tensei one situation where that thing takes like a fucking year and a half to come out. I promise it will be done before uh, before you know too long. I, I don't want to give a solid timeline on it, but I, I promise there's still constant progress being made on that let's play. It's just uh, work kind of sucks right now, um, but yeah, don't worry about that. But yeah, like like even with SMT stuff, like you know I. I have made it clear that taking a break from all that and coming back to it with more of like a, a chill and relaxed kind of like investment uh, was a, was a very positive experience for me, uh, and I feel like I've, I've kind of been having a lot more fun in the past year, just kind of naturally allowing myself to find things naturally. I I know I just use naturally there like way too many times in one sentence, but um like like. I've just been kind of exploring more and just kind of keeping my my mind open and keeping my attention open to different things. And one thing that I actually found really worked for me is if, like, I learned about a, a weird new thing and then I kept hearing about it from, like, more than one place, I would uh, I would kind of keep my mind on it or, you know, just kind of put it in the back of my mind. And just kind of go, you know, if I heard about it from a bunch of, like, random places and this is some weird, obscure thing, I should probably check it out because chances are it's, like, at least tangentially related to my interests. Um, and one thing that I think really, uh, I guess, exemplifies this for me is a book called Wisconsin Death Trip, um, which, I mean, other than the fact I'm from Wisconsin, so obviously, like, hey, that's a in. Um, it was a book that I had heard referenced in, like, two different podcasts and then a YouTube video I liked a lot, and I was like, okay, I really should probably um, pay attention to what this is. And then I played Omega Boost again to record a, a video review of it that some of you may have watched, and um, I was looking into the music of that, and, and one of the albums that was featured in that game was called Wisconsin Death Trip after the book, and I was like, okay, well... Like, there's so many random things in my life that are just, like, referencing this book. I might as well check it out. And it's just, basically, it's a collection of, like, turn of the century, as in, like, 1800s to 1900s, um, like, newspaper articles and random, like, reports and stuff about, like, tragic deaths in Wisconsin. And it, it kind of just paints this bleak picture of what wisconsin life was like back then and it's actually like it's a very depressing book and actually just like straight up warning like they they have some very unpleasant uncomfortable like funeral pictures in there of like very young children and shit um that is just kind of morbid and difficult to read through um but it also was a very valuable i guess um historical marker for me personally just kind of thinking about my state's history and how, like, actually, like, lonely and kind of unsafe that existence would have been back in the day, you know, like, you're in a log fucking cabin out in the middle of the woods and, like, absurdly terrible weather, kind of like I'm at now, but, you know, with the convenience of modern technology, it's not an issue for me. But, you know, back then they didn't have, like, easy access to heat all the time and, you know, food could run low and also, like, even just things like mental health wasn't great and, like, you couldn't go just speak to a therapist and all that shit and just like the the ways that society used to be so much more terrible it was just kind of a an interesting experience to go through that but even like with things that aren't like weird non-fiction things like that like um i've kind of found myself being more receptive to checking out like vintage anime and manga recommendations um i really i really want to get into legend of the galactic heroes cuz i know too many people who like the same types of like old Gundam stuff that I do that have also been recommending Legend of the Galactic Heroes, so I think I need to pull the trigger on that one of these days, but, uh, you know, the other part of this just it becomes, you know, I have too many different interests going on at once that it becomes hard to balance and, you know, properly manage my time with how I want to, like, tackle everything. Um, I honestly... I don't know how in 2019 people are bored. Like, I mean, the people within, like, this type of circle who do, like, nerd media stuff, there are so many fucking experiences and different types of works from all sorts of backgrounds available to us, and it's, like, honestly kind of 
simultaneously miraculous and overwhelming. Like, I, I have such a massive backlog, and I'm sure a lot of you are the same, that, like, we are just spoiled with the amount of experiences that, that we are able to go through no matter what medium you're looking to, uh, you know, explore in or whatever. Um, and I, I just think that's a really, really wonderful thing in the long run. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, right now, uh, I've been, like, really in, like, this Capcom sort of mood. The past few months, I've really gotten into, um, Devil May Cry stuff again, and I've been slowly, like, actually, uh, like, it's worth noting, PlayStation did a thing where they, they sent out, like, an email that kind of, um, tracked, like, your most played games and stuff, um, in 2018, and I put, like, a solid, like, I want to say, like, 70 hours into Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, which I thought it was, like, half that, but I've been playing a lot of that game, and I still haven't done everything into that that I want to do, um, and part of that is just because I'm really excited for Devil May Cry 5. Uh, but, I mean, with the advent of the Resident Evil 2 remake, I've gotten into a Resident Evil mood. Uh, and that stemmed from the fact that uh, I, I actually... <laughs> you know, this is going to sound terrible, considering I'm, you know, taking my time with that Kyaku Let's Play, and I have, like, that Steel Battalion thing I'm doing, and, you know, all this other shit. But I really do want to record a blind Let's Play of Resident Evil 2, just because that would be easy as fuck, um, and it would be simple to throw up or whatever. Uh, and also, you know, I, I just think that horror games like that, uh, especially Resident Evil, which is a series I have a lot of familiarity with, it, it makes for a fun blind playthrough just because you know you can get that raw reaction and kind of the initial like takes and all that um you know I, I think that'd be a f really fun thing to do i don't know how many people would be interested in watching that but um yeah I, i'll probably throw that up whenever i you know work isn't terrible again <laughs> um but yeah so i i ran into this thing because this is how fucked up my mind is um where i like put the Resident Evil 2 disc in, and it was downloading, and then I remembered that I never finished that Resident Evil 1 uh, HD remaster. You know, I've played Remake before, um, and I've I've beaten it multiple times before in the past, long ago, but I never, I never actually beat the PS4 port of it, and I went, you know, I should really play through that again just to, just to kind of freshen my memory up and, and build into 2, and then I thought, and I might as well play the original version of Resident Evil 2 as well, so I'm I'm fresh with that, so I know what I'm talking about if I record a Let's Play of it. Um, and this culminated in me <laughs> restarting my Resident Evil remake save, uh, and then spending, like, my whole weekend <laughs> playing through Resident Evil Remake, um, and I uh, need to finish up my uh, Claire A. Leon B. run of Resident Evil 2 PS1, and then I'll probably record myself going through uh, Remake 2 uh, <laughs> whenever I get the time. Uh, but, like, I don't know. Like, there's there's part of me that worries that, like, I'm using my time inappropriately because, like, boy, that's a lot of effort and, like, really unnecessary like, unnecessary work I'm putting on myself just to enjoy the new thing that's coming out that I want to play, but also, too, like, I'm having fun doing it along the way, and, like, it it feels right to me deep down to kind of do it the way I'm doing, um, at least in terms of, like, doing things like that for, you know, my own enjoyment and free time, though I guess <laughs> this is going to transition to my other point, uh, that kind of also, like, reflects badly on my output creatively. Um, I've been reflecting on this a lot the past few months on my Twitter, too, but, like, my channel has, like, no immediate focus anymore, uh, which is, like, fundamentally just a terrible way to run a YouTube channel, and I'm kind of happy that, like, I just kind of have accepted the fact that, like, I'm fine with that, uh, and I really just don't think I want this channel to have a focus because it's more fun for me personally if it doesn't. And I really like being able to go with the tide and just kind of go with whatever is fun to make. And I'm not locking myself into, like, any particular thing. Um, and, like, I really, really like... It. Like, I think even, like, thinking about all of the different, like, types of personalities both real and fictional that like I've always looked up to or have been like really really invested in like like what I'm thinking of right now is like John Constantine who is like kind of like one of those people that like you wouldn't think is skilled in a lot of different areas or knowledgeable about a lot of different areas and then 
kind of uses that resourcefulness to to win at the end of the day. Like, that's always been a character archetype I, I really, really love. And just, like, I, I, I've i always found that sort of character more interesting and fun to watch than a character who's, like, just, like, really good at fighting or something like that. Like, like the characters who, who aren't particularly good at any given thing, and they have to use all of the different tools at their disposal to solve a problem and, and really think on their toes and that sort of thing. Um, that's always been the sort of thing that I really, really love. Um so yeah, um, <laughs> going back to my channel output, um, like I'm just kind of browsing through my channel right now and it's like there's a bunch of live stream archives, uh, a variety of different like Steel Battalion, Zelda Let's Play, Zone of the Enders Let's Play, vlogs, uh, new fighting game series, podcast, unboxing, like Christ, this is like, it's a mess, but like, I kind of love it. Like the fucking kill zone review. What, like what dude who like primarily made a name for himself doing like JRPG videos, fucking reviews, kill, like kill zone. That's so fucking weird. Like even like this movie commentary thing that I started and we haven't updated for seven months. Um, I need to get back to that at some point. Um, yeah, like I've just created this like fucked up mess of a channel and it's doing pretty well and i'm actually kind of impressed that i haven't seemed to made like I, I don't think i've made too many people pissed off at me for that um like you know obviously there's a lot of people that like find me because of a thing like you know dragon guard's a big one as of late and they're like hey when are you gonna do dragon guard 2 and i always kind of have to be like well it's not like you know, later on I want to do it, but, like, not right now and sort of thing. But even then, like, people seem to be very, very patient and uh, maybe even too patient than they should be with me, to be completely honest. Um, and just very respectful of, uh, like, kind of... I don't even want to say, like, encouraging me to kind of go whatever fucking weird ways I go with things, but, like, honestly, like, aside from, like smt2 i don't get too many people who are like very ornery about like asking me to do a specific thing and even like smt2 is a thing i really really want to cover one of these days it's just you know if i do it i want to do it right and i more importantly not only do i want to do it right i want to do it when i'm you know in the mood to do it um and uh i i think dragon guard 2 is it sounds like uh zach and i are good to do that sometime this summer so that'll be fun um and uh i like how i'm saying all this sort of shit when i tried saying earlier in the year already that i should probably not open my mouth about future plans for things because god only knows when plans change and shit like that but uh that seems pretty locked in at this point um but yeah i don't know where i'm really going with this anymore other than the fact that like I just kind of am baffled by how I can get away with doing YouTube the way I'm doing it. And honestly, like, I'm not going to pretend that it hasn't hurt me in a lot of ways. Like, looking at it from, like, a raw analytical perspective, if I, like, focused in on, like, any one of the individual things that I really want to focus in on, I probably could be doing a lot better. But also, like, it would be dishonest to who I am as a person, and I don't want to do that. Um... Though honestly, too, that is kind of a, kind of a weird, annoying, nagging problem in the back of my head because I'm not gonna lie, like just having worked in office stuff the the past you know good while now, and slowly seeing my analytics go up in a way that like, you know, I I, I hate saying this because it sounds like I don't know, it just sounds weird and like kind of too idealistic for where i'm realistically at but like every day it's kind of looking more and more possible for me to kind of turn this into a side job um and side jobs tend to have a a sneaking uh you know a, a sneaky trend of becoming main jobs after a while um especially if things keep growing and um at least from how i look at my channel it's been growing healthy for quite a while now um and i think at some point this year i really do want to get around to launching a patreon because it's uh 
I don't know. I, I think I'm finally at a point where I'm comfortable enough with the quality and quantity of what I put out to be like, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be against the idea of people donating to encourage me to, you know, treat this maybe, I don't even want to say more seriously, because like, at the end of the day, like, I, I think it would just be a a sort of thing where if people supported me on Patreon, I'd be like, yeah, I, I should, like, I should actively more, like, carve out time of my week and weekends to, like, dedicate to this sort of thing than I do now, uh, and, like, really create sit-down time where I, you know, take this seriously because I wouldn't want people's, you know, money going to waste or whatever. Um, but also, too, it's, like, I can't, like... I can't pretend that, like, people would want to, like, or at least, like, a large number of people. I'm sure there's always going to be a few people that, like, will just, you know, be happy with any sort of subject I cover or whatever. Um, you always get that with, you know, anything that's, like, kind of personality-driven, I guess. Um, but no, um, you know, like, an average audience, like, chances are someone who finds me through, like, the model kit building videos I, like haven't made since like two months ago um i don't know how much they care about things like let's play zelda and let's play kyuyaku like they probably just want to see me build more model kits and those people are never going to support me on patreon because why would they it's it's not a reasonable you know uh investment for them if i'm not constantly just making the thing that uh you know they would want to make like you know those people to continue the example and the dichotomy we we're talking about earlier those people would be better served like watching a uh, zaku aurelius or you know like um i'm forgetting the other gumpla youtuber i watch let's see if he's uploaded recently hold on i'm sorry uh mecha guy kotsu that's the, that's the guy like they'd be better off watching someone like you know those two guys who like you know th their whole channels are dedicated around gumpla stuff uh, and honestly, like, same with, like, people who like YouTube, or, I'm, fuck, fuck me, I'm, it's late, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is already going on way longer, and, uh, is more self-indulgent than I thought it would be, uh, but, like, same with people who just like, like, raw, like, um, uh, like, video game stuff, like, I don't know how much those people care to hear me talking about, like, anime, or, like, hear me talking about shit like Titans, or, you know, Ghost in the Shell on a podcast, um, I don't know, it's just a weird fucking thing, and also I don't want to come across like this is me complaining, because, like, honestly, I'm in no fucking personal, um, position to ever really complain about how this shit is going, or even people who have, like, beef with how I go about things, because I'm sure I have annoyed people, and, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, if I was one of my own viewers and I was keeping up with the Kyaku Let's Play and I was really excited about the Kyaku Let's Play, I'd probably be a little upset that it's only weekly, you know, that's, like, a natural human reaction thing, I guess, uh, you know, whenever there's a thing that you really like and latch on to, you, you, you know, you want to see more of it, and when you get something else instead, sometimes, you know, it's just kind of the natural reaction to be a little bummed out at the very least, um, Obviously, it's, you know, no reason to get mad, but luckily, as I've stated, people have actually been pretty good about not getting mad when I upload things that aren't, you know, what they want to see. So, um, yeah, um, honestly, like, just in general, I, I feel, like, really thankful, like, where I'm at with this whole YouTube thing. Like, it's really, like, it just really fucks me up. Like, I'm looking at the numbers again, and it's like, well, actually, I just clicked away from the numbers, but let me... Let me click back in. Um, this is great for content. There we go. Okay. Yeah, like, in the past 28 days, people have spent 171,544 minutes um, watching my garbage, and that translates to 119 days and three hours. Um, and that really fucks me up. Like, that people, like, care that much i suppose like it's just kind of a weird mind-boggling thing that i haven't really ever gotten over since i started doing this uh and you know it makes me happy that at the very least i seem to be doing something right and making folks happy um but yeah i i honestly like i do think about what directions and what rabbit holes i should go down with this uh with this whole channel thing a lot, probably a lot more than is healthy, to be completely honest. I, I have spent so much, like, random emotional and, like, 
yeah actually financial too like investment into this channel um in like probably some of the weirdest ways that i i don't even think i'm entirely comfortable always like stating but like this whole thing means a lot to me and i'm really happy that it's been as successful as it has been for me um just because like i don't know like sometimes like i'm browsing around on reddit and i see like a, a dude like i'll catch like a, a let's play subreddit thread where someone's like yeah i just got my 50th subscriber like four years in and i'm like oh god like uh like you know it, it like youtube is a is a harsh space to you know gain any sort of platform in and um honestly i'd still probably be making stuff if like i did have like 50 subs or whatever just because like the very act of making videos um can be like really therapeutic for me and also probably a way that i'm gonna admit is probably not super healthy um but like i i just i love i love the act of publishing something uh, which I think I've also kind of discovered through my job. Like, when I send out a press release and I know that, like, there's a couple hundred people at the very least taking a look at, like, the dumb, like, 300-word blurb I wrote, I, I, I feel very, I don't want to say prideful, but I feel very satisfied with that. Like, it feels good knowing that, like, I put something out in the world that I created with my own two hands and, like, people are getting something from it, whether that be information or entertainment or, you know, ideally both um or at least some sort of like unique insider perspective um and i think one of the most beautiful things about this vlog that is now going on for over 30 minutes and i need to get to bed so i'm gonna stop now um is that this was directionless and kind of meaningless and really self-indulgent and just me rambling for far too long uh much like the initial problem i talked about in the beginning where i don't specialize or commit to anything and I'm just kind of a fucking mess of a person interest-wise. Um, and I think I have problems with... Maybe I should kind of sit down and focus on things a little bit more in various areas of my life instead of just waltzing about all the time. But in the meantime, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop and smell the roses because uh, at the end of the day, I think it... Uh, I, I think it gives me a more unique perspective on things that I, I enjoy having. And actually, before I recorded this video, I realized I did have a point I wanted to make, which is that, um... <laughs> oh god, this is so weird getting into this 30 minutes. Um, I, I, do, I do find that there is a substantial difference and, and a worth um, in having a large set of like minor skills just in the fact that that gives you that does give you a broader perspective on things that sometimes specialists can miss out on um, and, and I think one thing that I can really think of that hammers that point home is um, I think both Brandon Sanderson and Stephen King I've seen talk about this point before but a lot of the times um people go and get English majors thinking that it's going to make them this amazing writer and this like really good novelist. And a lot of the times what that teaches is, is that teaches them theory. Um, but in a lot of cases, some of the most successful writers that there are, um, aren't just strictly from that academic, like English background, but you know, they're people that have lived certain life experiences that then use that as perspective to, fuel their writing and and kind of further that that um you know course along in their life where uh they kind of synthesize their two skills into into something that's unique and catches attention and and can provide some meaningful insight uh, and that's kind of how i like to view all of the different interests i have like you know i i'm i'm bad at making podcasts but like i can make a podcast i'm pretty bad at making let's plays sometimes I wish I was better at streaming. Actually, you know what? I'll, I'll give it. I think I can make a mean Let's Play if I really want to. I'm not always happy with how each episode turns out, but I, I think overall Let's Plays I, I got on lock. At least I'm happy with them. Uh, streaming, I wish I was a little bit better at, but I'm still working on that, trying to force myself to uh, get a little bit more comfortable with that, I feel. Um, and yeah, like I feel like each of those little individual endeavors like kind of you know, become greater than the sum of their parts and kind of build up my skill set as a person uh, who can make things that people enjoy in weird ways. 
Um, you know, everything's a learning experience and everything, um, you know, can be used as a lesson to influence your future endeavors and um, help you be a better person or a better creator in the long run, I guess. Whew. Okay, yeah, it's after midnight now, and I'm just going to keep talking if I keep going on like this. So I'm sorry for possibly wasting your time. Uh, I have like a really busy work week I'm not looking forward to, and I think deep down inside this is just a way to delay me not being able to make anything for a bit. So that was, yeah, I don't know. I hope you gain something from this. I, I guess make a comment of some kind down below. If you have, like, anything to add to this, I don't fucking know. Hopefully someone at some point got something out of this video. I'm gonna fucking stop recording now. <laughs>